Hello, girls, guys, or otherwise, this is Rich, and welcome to our Table Talk Thursday. Uh, I'm trying to get my... Oh, yep, okay, we are live. Um, or recording, at least. Uh, welcome to our Table Talk Thursday. I got my Table Topics cubed. You have yours. If you would like one, go ahead and go into the description box below. Um, there is a link there for the Table Topics cubes. Um, not this particular one, but ones just like it. All that good stuff. I'm sorry for hitting the mic there if you guys heard that. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your beverage, whatever it may be. Sit on back, relax. Remember to hit that subscribe button right over here. Hit that bell notification because apparently that's the thing. And hit the like button if you like these videos. It helps appease the algorithmic gods of YouTube. All hell, the algorithmic gods of YouTube. And also remember to hit that comment uh, section down there and let me know what your take is on this week's uh, topic. No clue what this topic is. Kind of afraid to see it because we've been opening some wounds here uh, the last couple weeks with the Table Talk Thursdays. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. I'm going to try to make this a somewhat short and sweet video um, because it is 9 o'clock on a Monday and I kind of want to go to bed because I have work tomorrow. Anyway, let's see what today's topic is or this week's topic is. How much more should the wealthy be taxed? <laughs> Can I just say, feel the burn. <clears throat> the issue with our tax system is that the middle and lower class basically fund most of this country and it is appalling seeing that you have wealthy individuals that have tax abatements and whatnot and have towns scrambling uh, to try to get them into their towns uh, <clears throat> Amazon uh, trying to get those uh, companies into their towns because it will bring more jobs. However, uh, they get these huge tax abatements where everybody else's taxes go up in order to cover that tax abatement of, you know, 25, 30 years. Um, case in point, uh, I live in New Jersey, uh, as a lot of you know. And for one, the taxes are insane here. Um, if I were to pick a state to live in, it would not be New Jersey, but hey, that's kind of where I ended up and, uh, I already had a house here. So that's kind of where I came back to. And, um, the taxes are high here. So anyway, we have in the, uh, in the county that I'm in, not, not in the specific town that I'm in. We just had a, an Amazon warehouse, a fulfillment center, uh, come to our town. It is a mile long warehouse. And yes, of course, it's going to bring in jobs. However, those jobs aren't really sustainable and they don't necessarily pay a livable wage for all of them. So that's an issue. That's a whole other issue. Um, but... Amazon itself got a tax abatement for, I believe it was 25 years uh, in order to build this warehouse and bring jobs in. <clears throat> Sounds great. Brings jobs in. Yeah, it doesn't matter that it's not necessarily bringing jobs to this town that they put it in because the people that work there ride the train in. <laughs> they, they ride the... Um, the what you call it, the the train system and whatnot they take public transit to get there you can see them you know during shift changes you can see the crowd of people coming on and off the train so no it's not necessarily bring ta uh jobs to the town does it bring some absolutely i'm not going to deny that but the thing that the town kind of doesn't tell the rest of the people is yeah they got a tax abatement, but guess who's paying their bill? This multi-billion dollar company, guess who's paying their bill? The people that live on a fixed income down by the Delaware River. You guys are now footing the bill for this Amazon warehouse to be here. Does that have any good effects on you? Not necessarily. You can have a, a, a business 
that you've had for years. Say, say you have your own furniture store. You know, you make furniture by hand and whatnot. Um, you know, you have this furniture store. Yeah. You know, you make custom pieces or you have a website and whatnot. No big deal. It's a small mom and pop store that you've had for generations. Well, guess what? You're on a kind of a fixed income because nobody's looking for, you know, customized furniture as much anymore. There are some. Let's continue with this. Your taxes are now going up to cover this multi-billion dollar business uh, that doesn't have to pay anything in the in local taxes for another 25 years. Okay, by the time you end up uh, reaping the benefits of lower taxes when Amazon is done with their tax abatement, for one, they may not even exist anymore if they do they may not be the hot new thing that everybody's going towards they may decide to close up that plant or that warehouse and consolidate because you know that's how things work uh people change tastes change and unless amazon continues to stay with um the current flow of the market and whatnot which it seems like they are um, I will give them that. They are not stupid. Um, but if they end up saying, well, you know what? We, we, we've we run out of that tax abatement. They can close that plant, or that, not plant down. They can close that warehouse down and move to another town and start their tax abatement again. By the time that 25 years runs out, their warehouse could start falling apart. They could say, you know what? It's going to cost more in upkeep than it will to just move. And they can do that. They're a multi-billion dollar company and nobody's holding them accountable. So giving tax breaks to the uber wealthy in this situation, uh, the uber wealthy companies, uh, corporations and whatnot, is not a good idea. The trickle-down economics of, of Reagan did not work. They have not worked at all ever since it, they tried this. It doesn't happen. What happens is, okay, we're going to produce a lot of things. You know, a lot of little things. Little things here, little things there. And, you know, cute little things that people buy like crazy. Okay. Or useful things that they buy like crazy. Okay. Giving Apple a tax break so they can make more iPhones and everything, just means that more people are going to buy those iPhones, which did not come down in price, mind you. And not only that, it's just going to their upper echelon of people. It is not trickling down to the workers of the, you know, the people that are assembling these cell phones. No, that doesn't happen. Could they hire more people? Yes, but are they also outsourcing to, you know, other countries in order to have cheaper labor? Absolutely. Have their prices dropped at all? No. Um, and, and the same thing can be said about Amazon. You know, you're giving money, giving money, giving money. Whenever, yeah, they, they come to a town, they hire a lot of people, but they also fire a lot of people. And they don't necessarily always treat them in the best way. Um, so there's a lot of things with this trickle-down economic system that a certain wing of the uh, American uh, political system thinks actually works. And it doesn't. Um, and unfortunately, the rich only get rich, richer and it, uh, it primarily happens a lot more whenever you cut their taxes. If you do a tax cut for the rich, they just hold on to it. There's a reason that they don't feel any pain. Um, but whenever you give a big tax break to the rich, the lower and middle class um, classes need to make up that difference. If you taxed the rich, uh, even at a flat tax, if you taxed anybody making over 40000 a flat tax, let's say 10%, just throwing numbers out there that are easy to work with. Okay, 
somebody that made a billion dollars this year uh, will be paying, what, $100 million? Do I have that math right? Somebody check my math. Pretty sure that's right. Okay, that's $100 million. But somebody that broke 40000 yeah, they're going to have to pay four grand. Okay, that's that's a big chunk to to work from. But you know what? Everybody's paying that same 10% over a certain amount of money. And I think that's the one thing to caveat is over a certain amount of money, you you need to either pay a flat tax or you can do a graduated type of system that we have now. Um, how much should the wealthy be taxed? I don't have a specific number. Um, and, you know, eco you know, economics uh, people, you know, people in the economic, uh, the economists out there. Thank you. Thank you, brain. You, you've come late to the party here. But uh, the economists out there will differ on their opinion of how much is too much and how little is too little and blah 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 and all that stuff and they will disagree and that's you know that's what an economics uh economist uh apparently gets paid for but whatever i did not get into that field on purpose because it's incredibly mind-boggling and i don't understand all of it and i can tell you quite honestly that i don't understand all of it but i think that the wealthy should get paid or should get taxed a lot more than than they do right now um i also think that people should get paid a livable wage so no matter what state you are in the un you are a part of it within the union of the united states you should have this protection that you are able to make a livable wage and at very least afford a one bedroom apartment there is not one state in the union that you can actually work minimum wage and live in a um in a one bedroom apartment and it's quite sad that that is the situation here but that has nothing to do with taxes that's just you know the fill the burn um i do like bernie but um i i yeah uh bernie's not my favorite person but i do like a lot of his his points and whatnot but that is uh that is my little political rant, apparently. Uh, never know what happens whenever we open up the Table Topics Cube. So, yeah. Um, that was fun. Uh, what are your thoughts? Leave them down, down below. Please, be, uh, be respectful. This is a very contentious type of uh, uh, topic. So just, yeah, just be respectful about it. We can, we can have a discourse and that's fine. We can have differences in opinions and, uh, differences in, um, in, the, in economic theory. And that's fine. Uh, as long as if it is respectful. Um, and if you have a better way to fix this system, do let me know. Um, yeah, other than that. That's all that I have for Table Talk Thursday. Join me uh, on Saturday for our Chapter 1 of the Outer Temple of Witchcraft by Christopher Penzak. Um, join me on Sunday for Christopaganism Sunday. Join me on Tuesday for... What are we doing? We're, we're doing a deck review and reveal. Cannot tell you off the top of my head what deck it is. And join me on Wednesday for our continuation in the Chakra series for Witchy Wednesday. And we are going on the third eye. So join me then for that. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell notification. All that good YouTube stuff. So until next time, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye-bye.